All right, this is lesson 4.3 in our, in our fourth unit. Um, it's about proofs with parallel lines. Um, so if you remember from our third unit, uh, we introduced this idea of proofs and providing reasoning or evidence um, for mathematical statements um, that we're trying to prove. Um, so trying to logically think through how, why does this make sense and why can I, I say these mathematical statements. Um, and so we'll be looking at some parallel line proofs. Uh, we won't be uh, proving too much as we were in the last unit, we're more just looking at continuing to provide reasons um, and evidence um, to show our thinking of why we know something to be true, um, specifically around parallel lines. Uh, so if you remember, uh, before winter break, uh, we were talking about these four different types of angle relationships, uh, corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior angles, and consecutive interior angles. Um, so you want to make sure you remember uh, those, um, those different angle types um, and how to identify them uh, when two lines are cut by a transversal. And you want to make sure you especially remember um, what we know about those angles and their relationship to each other uh, when we have two parallel lines uh, cut by a transversal. So we see in each of these images here, um, we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal and the different angle types are highlighted. Um, and so we want to make sure we remember that corresponding angles are congruent. So angles one and five here are congruent. Alternate interior angles are also congruent, three and five. Alternate exterior are congruent, one and seven and then consecutive interior um, are supplementary, meaning their measurements add up to 180 degrees. Um, so if you uh, don't remember those, I'd make sure to go back and read over those notes or watch uh, the videos uh, where we talk about those. Um, but we'll need to know that knowledge uh, for what we're doing today. All right, this image here is what I was just talking about with what we know about those angles for corresponding alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior, um, how they're congruent or supplementary. Um, one thing I just want to highlight here is that word theorem. Um, so each of those are a particular theorem. That's something that's been proven to be true. Okay, that's what a theorem is. Um, it's proven to be true. Um, it's, it's not something we just accept because um, someone say it is. We accept it um, and understand it to be true because it's been proven um, like what we've done with proofs. It's, it's been shown over and over again uh, to be accurate. Um, and so each of those are a theorem. Um, to say that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the corresponding angles are congruent. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Um, so we want to make sure we understand those theorems and just understand the basic structure of a theorem. It's setting up a premise, like a, a given statement. We have parallel lines cut by a transversal, and then there's a conclusion. The pairs of consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Because okay, we'll look at some more theorems in this lesson. All right, the first theorem for this lesson um, is related to the theorems we were just looking at with corresponding angles, off interior, and so on. Um, but these theorems are what we call converses, okay? and, and that just means basically the reverse. Okay? So in the original theorem, the corresponding angles theorem, it said if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, uh, then the corresponding angles are congruent. But now we're kind of re reversing it. This one is saying if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, so we're starting by understanding that the corresponding angles are congruent. Okay, that's, that's our initial given information. Then we can say the lines are parallel. So this converse theorem is giving us uh, information to say that if we can prove or show that the corresponding angles um, of two lines cut by transversal are congruent to each other, they have the same measurements, then I can prove the lines to be parallel. Okay, so it's kind of the reverse of the other one. And it's true for, for all of those different angle types, alternate interior, alternate exterior, and consecutive interior as well. If you can show the alternate interior, alternate exterior angles are congruent for two lines cut by transversal, then you can prove, um, then the converse says that the lines are parallel. Okay, I don't need to prove anything else because we have these theorems. Okay. Um, these uh, these converse theorems. Um, so it's just the reverse of what we were doing. It's like if they're congruent, then they're parallel. Before it was if they're parallel, then they're congruent or supplementary. Now it's if they're congruent or supplementary, um, the lines are parallel. Okay, so that's what we're trying to work with is, is show that these lines are parallel. Um, so those are theorems. Again, you don't have to memorize those theorems. We, we, we've got those written down in our notes, um, and so you can just refer back to them. But you do need to know how to use them um, and when to use them. Um, and it's all based off of what we're saying. You're, you're identifying the information. Do you see some information that says these angles are congruent? 
If so, then you, you can show that they're parallel. the lines are parallel. One other theorem we'll look at is very similar to something we've seen before. It's the transitive property of parallel lines. Um, if you remember, the transitive property of equality says that if two terms are equal to the same term, then those two original ones are equal to each other, uh, basically. Um, it's the same for parallel lines. If two lines are parallel to the same line, then those two lines are parallel to each other. Okay? So in this picture here, if P is parallel to Q and line Q is parallel to R, then line P is parallel to R. What you'll mainly be doing in, in this lesson is just providing um, your reasonings and, and your thoughts um, or explaining your thinking um, as to why two lines are parallel or not parallel. Um, so this is number four in your notes. So if you're looking at lesson 4.3 in your notes, um, this is number four um, on, that, on that, I believe it's page 13 in your notes. Yeah, page 13. Um, so this one says, is there enough information in the given diagram to conclude that um, the line M is parallel to N? Explain. Um, so we have this figure here. This top angle is 75 degrees. This bottom angle is 105 degrees. This little 75 right here, I've added that in to show you um, kind of what we'll be um, what we'll be doing. Uh, but if you'll notice in your notes, that seven, this second 75 is not there, right? Um, so I want to show R, M, and N parallel to each other, and how can I explain that, that they actually are. Um, so yes, M and N are going to be parallel to each other, but why? How do I know that? Well, if I have this 75 degree angle here and this 105 degree angle here, um, because we know that two lines, um, two straight lines, um, you know, right here, these adjacent angles are going to form a linear pair. Okay, for these two, um, for these uh, two straight lines that are across them, they've got this common ray here. Um, so if these two angles are going to form a linear pair, then if this is 105 degrees, then this is 75 degrees because that's 180 minus 105. So this angle is also 75 degrees. Now this angle that I've just shown to be 75 degrees is corresponding to this original 75 degree angle at the top. Okay. This is why you want to know those different angle types, right? Because I can identify that these two angles are corresponding to each other. Um, so if these are both corresponding angles and they're both 75 degrees, that means they're congruent. Okay. So what we've shown here is that these two angles are congruent for these two lines cut by a transversal. And the corresponding angles converse says that if these two corresponding angles are congruent, then these two lines are going to be parallel. Okay, so M and N are parallel. So that's how I can show or give reason for um, M and N being parallel to each other. Okay? Uh, because I was able to show that these corresponding angles are congruent, then I can say that these two lines cut by a transversal are parallel. So that's number four uh, in your notes. Uh, let's look at one more example. All right, here's number five. It's, it's just right next um, on page 13. So in this diagram below, we're told that angle P, or not angle P, line P is parallel to line Q, and line Q is parallel to line R. And we want to find the measure of angle 8. And we'll explain our reasoning. So ultimately, um, angle 8 here is going to be 65 degrees. Um, so we're going to show that angle 8 is going to be 65 degrees. Um, and so let's figure out how do I know that, right? How did I get that answer? Well, if we're told that angle P is parallel to angle Q and angle Q is parallel to angle R, the transitive property of parallel lines, which we learned today, says that angle P or not angle line P is parallel to line R. Because P and R are both parallel to Q, P and R are parallel to each other. So it might be helpful to even kind of visually or maybe even redraw this figure so that Q isn't there because you're normally used to working with just two lines. Um, so you don't have to do that, but you might think about, okay, if Q was, wasn't there, because I now know that P and R are parallel to each other. Okay, so those are my two parallel lines that I'm concerned with. So if I know that P and R are parallel to each other, if this is 115 degrees, this angle right here, the, its corresponding angle is right here, right above the eight angle, okay? angle eight. 
So this 115 degree angle is corresponding to this angle down here, right? They're in matching positions on different lines on the same side of the transversal. Um, and so this angle right here is also, right above the 8, is also 115 degrees. That's the corresponding angle's theorem, okay, that those angles are congruent with these parallel lines. And now these angles here, okay, these angles here, this 115 degree angle and this angle 8, those form a linear pair, right? They share that, that common ray, um, they're on a straight line. Um, so if this is 115 degrees um, with this angle 8, they form a linear pair. So the linear pair postulate would say that the measure of angle 8 is equal to 180 minus 115, right? So if the total, they would be 180, you minus the 115 angle, that would leave you with the measure of angle 8, okay, um, which is 65. 180 minus 115 is 65. So that's how I get angle 8 to be 65 degrees. So I showed that you know these lines were parallel to each other by the um, transitive property parallel lines. Those angles were congruent by the corresponding angles theorem. And then I had a linear pair, and so I just took the angle um, subtracted from 180 um, to get what the measure of angle 8 is. So using these different theorems um, and, and properties, we were able to, one, uh, determine if lines were parallel, and that's what we did in the previous example, and then two, determine what the measurements of the angles are. Okay, so using our, our, our transitive property and theorems. Remember, you don't have to remember all those properties and theorems. You've got your reasons notes uh, that, that um, are, you're able to look at and use to, to justify your reasoning and explain your thoughts. Um, but we need to know how to use them, how to use them and make sense of them um, here. Right? They're just supporting your thinking and giving you a reason for why you're doing what you're doing. Okay? Um, so let's go ahead and start working with all of this.